Hi, I'm Patricia from Trisha's Lovely Creations, and today we're going to create texture sheets, and we're going to create these lovely pendants out of the texture sheets, and use mica powder on them. Aren't they beautiful? So here I've got some Sculpey Bacon Bin rolled out on my thickest setting. And that's what we're going to use today. But you can use regular clay as well. I just, I'm using the bacon bin because I happen to have it on hand. And what I'm using to make my texture sheets are some embossed uh, old card stock that I've got from an old greeting card. I don't know how well you can see the texture in that. I guess you can see it. I got two different ones. There's one from the outside of the card and one on the inside of the card. So that's why I've got two of them. And here's how they come out. I don't know if you can see that very well. Oh, there we go. If I tilt it that way. They come out pretty good. I was really surprised at how good they did come out. But like I said, if you don't have bacon bin, just use your regular Sculpey or, uh, not Sculpey, Primo, um, or whatever you happen to have on hand. And I gotta find my roller. There it is. So, what I'll do is, I'll roll this out on here, cut it, and then stick it in the oven on the tile no lifting involved so that I don't mess up the pattern. And I'll start with the big one here. Got smudgy in my clay. Okay, now I got a hair in my clay. I can't get it out. Yeah, my Q-tip and my alcohol. Don't want to gouge my clay trying to get it out. Come on. And I don't want to come out. There we go. Got it now. Okay. Let's try that again. So I'm going to lay this like so. Um, I haven't put anything on it. Um, if you're worried that it might stick, go ahead and use just some cornstarch for it. Um, but this hasn't seemed to stick to it, so I'm just going to do it on the uh, clay as it is. You want good firm pressure. Okay. And carefully lift it up. And there you've got your pattern. Okay, and then I'll decide where I want to cut it at. I didn't do too good a job down here pushing when I first put it on there, so I'm going to cut that off of there. And I 
just ran into it. Yes, I did. That's okay. I didn't cut as much off as I wanted to anyway. I'm trying to see where I want to be here. go. There's that side. <clears throat> and I want to go about, let's see, how thick do I want it here? I can't remember how wide I made that. <laughs> Wrong one. And I don't know if you can hear that music. My husband's up there doing dishes. And he always plays his music when he does. If you can hear it, I apologize. Okay, let's see. I want it to be about... What am I going to do until I get that? I'm going to go ahead and make this one a little bit longer. And then I got this edging from the card. And I'm going to go ahead and try to smooth that out. Got this little spot here too. That didn't work out. There we go. This stuff is very sticky. Okay. I think that side is still a little bit off. It still looks bowed to me. Sorry, just checking something here real quick. Okay. That's better. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll pop this in the oven as it is. And that way I don't mess up my texture on the sheet. And then we'll start on the next one on a new tile. And I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to do the other one now. And I'm just going to lay that on there. 
like so. Again, I'm not using anything. You might want to uh, use some cornstarch. And just firmly push really good. off and it'll be ready to go in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and turn it this time so I can cut it right <laughs> the first time. And I'll wait until the other one's done and then I'll pop this one in the oven. And while I was doing that, I will show you with my texture sheets how to do the impression and how to paint them. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And while those are cooking, I'll go ahead and show you with my other textures. How to texture the sheet. And what I've got here is black Primo rolled out on my thickest setting. I'm going to dust it with a little cornstarch. Okay, and then I'm going to also dust my texture sheet. Let me see which one I want to use. I really like this bottom part, so I think I'm going to use that. And you can't hardly see what I'm doing. There we go. Just tapping that down in there. Now I'm going to tap off the excess. Lay it on there. Get my acrylic roller. I'm going to stand up. Put some good pressure on there. And roll it out. Okay. Then carefully peel it off. That's 
side come up a little bit. That's all right. We'll just tap it down, maybe. Now I'm going to take my brush again and dust off the excess. Because we're going to be painting these with mica powder. You want that cornstarch off there. making sure it's down real good on the tile because I won't lift it off of here either okay now I'm going to get a cutter so that I can cut out my shape dust these edges with cornstarch also so that it don't get stuck and I just take my cornstarch and dab my brush in there and go around the edges I would show you but it's going to get all over that you just go around the edges of your cutter or you can lay it out and then dip the cutter in it whichever is easiest for you Pardon me, tap off any excess, line back up where I want it, that looks good, I'm going to sand up over it, making sure that's down, that's just the texture there, firm even pressure, and lift it off. Now I'll pull that excess off. There we go. And the mica powders I'm going to be using today are uh, Perfect Pearls from Ranger. so I can clean it. <clears throat> I need to get more of these. I absolutely love them. The colors are just amazing. And I'll tell you what I'm using. I am using Blue Panther. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Is that Panther or? No, Patina, excuse me. I wasn't looking at it right. Um, Forever Violet, Forever Green, Forever Blue, Forever Red, Perfect Gold, and Green uh, Patina. Okay, I'm going to be using this brush here that came with my Perfect Pearls kit. 
and a detailed brush from uh, Plaid Folk Art. Yeah, from Plaid. It's the Folk Art uh, detail brushes. Plaid. Okay. And I like to start off with my gold. Dip it in there. And I use the lid to tap off the excess. Then I just get going to town. Don't worry if it kind of goes over into the next area. These go on top of each other great. Let me zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. There's one. Sorry for the dings, I forgot to turn my phone down again. There we are. It's very easy to do this technique. It's just very time consuming. But you just kind of go zen like you're painting. And uh, just time flies by. Don't worry about anything. Don't think about nothing. Just kind of where you're putting your next color down. pick a color for my flower. I like using these three. I will love it when I can get some more colors though. Let me move that a little bit. There we go. Okay. You know what? 
I think I might use another color in here because there's that one back there hiding. I'm gonna use the regular pearl also. Perfect pearl. Just trying to decide here where I want to go with my colors. I don't know if you can see that, but see how well it just goes over that color that was there. Coverage is really good with this stuff. Oh, did I show you the necklace I made out of it? I think I did in the pictures that I posted. But I think I forgot to show you here. I resined it. There it is. There you go. Well, it keeps getting a bad glare on it here. There you go. Boom. But yeah, that's the necklace I made. It was just a tester piece was all. Came out great. I gotta go check something real quick and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Me. I need to turn that phone down so it quits dinging.
I'm going to get to where I have to start turning it. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue and highlight some of these. And then blend them. Or I think that little piece there is part of that <coughs> flower. Yes, it is. I think in one of them I didn't color that piece out of color. It looks alright. So you can do it however you want to do it. That looks good. Hmm, let's see. I think I might do this one in white. Do that one in blue, that one in red.
And there we go. That's all there is to it. Now I'll throw this in the oven and I'll bring over the texture sheets and show you how they came out. I'm sorry if the fan, the fan is too loud, but it's getting kind of warm down here. And here they are done now the oven. And I'm going to be putting these two up in my Etsy shop. So if you would like to purchase them, that's where you'll find them. And I'm probably going to try to get that done today. That way, by the time the video goes up, they'll be out for sale. And I plan on making more. So there'll be more than one person will be able to buy them. Because <laughs> I think they're going to be really popular. So thank you. And I'll be back as soon as the uh, pendant is done in the oven. And we'll resin it. And I'll show you how I've been doing the backs. I'm back. And now it has... It is done. <laughs> and it has cooled off. So now I'll show you what I do next. Um, sorry about the strobing lights. The washer is going with the oven. And so... Everything is just all messed up. Our electricity is horrible here. I apologize. But I'm going to dust this off in case there's any loose powders. I'll get them off. And there's usually not. Except for the ones that are around it. When I baked it. So. Okay. I'll lift that off. And I'll show you what I do to the backs. Um, I go ahead and sand them. And we're going to put uh, nail foils on them. Sorry, there you go. I'm going to put nail foils on it. Um, you can see the streaking there. I tried it, uh, to put on the extreme tack with a uh, brush, which it worked. And it kept my hands from getting messy, but it streaked real bad and you can still see the streaking through the nail foils so what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna try one of my finger coats with the glue and spread it on that way see how it goes so we'll find out together if it's a good or a bad thing but that's what we're gonna do to the back so I'm gonna go sand that and I'll be back because you've seen me sand in a couple of my other videos that are recent the um, hairpin video I believe I did the bracelet video I believe I sanded those as well so I'm gonna sand this and I'll be back I decided to go ahead and show you how I sand so I'm gonna get started on that now I start off with 400 onto my uh, petty wand Oh, I got my gloves. You might be wondering why do I use a glove. I'll tell you why I use a glove. I use a glove because I'm really good at even with these. I still try to sand off my fingers. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. So now I always wear gloves. Save your fingers. Put on a glove. I got some pretty deep pockets in there this time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to my 600.
button. I'll go to 800. <clears throat> Pardon me. And now I'm going to go to my thousand, and then that's where I'll stop. And that's good. Now I'll take my water and rinse it off. Now we go. Beautiful still. Find my towel and my lid. I just dab it dry. It sticks good, but I don't want to rub it. that aside, wait for that to dry a bit. And it's dry, pretty much, I do believe. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to apply E6000 Extreme Tack. And I got this idea from watching uh, Susan Bailey, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. I believe it's Bailey. Um, at Turtle Soup Beats. I gotta get my nail foils. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got my nail foil here. And I got my finger coat on. Got me a pair of scissors. My extreme tack. And we're gonna apply that now. And a little goes a long way. making streaks like this too. It's already getting tacky. There we go. Now I'm going to wipe this off with an alcohol pad so hopefully I can reuse it. back on. And it's still a little bit tacky. Now 
let that set and dry for a spell. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Zoom out just a little bit. that on there and then kind of rub it on. That's what I did with my other ones. Put that on there. Just kind of start doing it with my nail. And then I start to peel it. Try to overlap it if I can. something on there. That's not good. Okay. There we go. Hopefully I wasn't out of view doing that.
There we go. Pretty backing. And now I'm going to resin. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, UV resin today. I don't really like it compared to the ice resin. Um, but it's quick. That's what I like about it. But it's not as pretty if you ask me as the ice resin. Try to get that little flake off there. Not sure what it was. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm ready to resin, and what I'm going to be using today is Decorom um, UV resin. And this one I had to put under the light for about a half hour. I think I'm almost out. And I'm going to be using my little silicone brush here to put it on. Oh my god, a hair. I think I got it. So yeah, I'll probably have to do a second coat. <clears throat> but I'm going to pop this under the UV light. And then we'll do the back again or the front, depending on how it goes. Oh, I do want to get rid of any bubbles here. go. I'm going to pop this in the light. Okay, now what I'm doing is I've got some tiles on here to uh, make it flat again because it's curved up because of the putting on the UV resin and it curing. Uh, sometimes they bow. So I'm going to get one more tile. I got my big one. So put that on there and I'll let that set for a while till it cools down. And then we should be ready to do another layer of the uh, Decorom UV finish 
or I'll either do the front depending on how it looks. I really didn't take time to look at it. So I'll be back. Okay, I am back and I flattened it out as good as I could. It's still bowed a little bit, but hopefully it will not cause it to run over the edge on the front. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the Decorom UV resin to do the front. And uh, we'll start that right now. Okay, and I'm going to use the Decorom now on the front. That way you can see it done right away. I do believe that's got it, and now I'm going to get rid of any bubbles. And I'll pop it under the light, and we'll take it out, and I'll show you how it looks when we're done. Okay, it's done and out of the UV light. Um, I'm going to have to put on another coat because it's kind of bumpy in places probably because of the texture so I'm gonna do that put it under the light again and then I'll be back okay I'm back and now I'm gonna take and put tiny Pandora's uh, deep shine brush on UV finish around the edges because it only takes two minutes for that to cure so that's what I'm gonna use on the edges you can use whatever kind you have on hand but I like to use this one better so if you have that, I recommend you using that. If you don't have it, I recommend you getting some. I'm doing the edges like Katie Gordon. Um, that's where I learned to do the edges with your UV resin. So, just wanted to point that out. And now I'm going to get started. And I like to do it one side at a time. And you can see I've got some the powders around the edges. I think it's cool. That's why I'm not getting rid of it. I think it makes it look neat. Okay, looks good.
and then I'll pop this under the light for 10 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, and here we are. I'm going to do another side. And I'll put that under the light for another two minutes. And I'll come back and do the last side. Alrighty, that one's done. Now we'll do the next side, and that'll be the last side. There we go. Now I'll put that under the light. And I'll probably go ahead and do um, maybe six minutes just to make sure that it's all even all the way around. And here we have it. And we're just about done. I need to make it into a necklace. So, but here's the front. They come out looking pretty good, I guess. I really, like I said though, I like using the ice resin better than I do the UV resin though. There's the back. And the sides. So now I'm going to drill a hole in it. And we will I have a little bit spill over there. That's all right. Fix that. I got to put another coat on the back anyway. I should probably do that before I put a hole in it. Yeah. Let me fix that boo boo, and then then we'll drill it out and put it on a chain, string, cord, we will, I will fix this and then I'll put it on a cord because that's not cured so sand that off. I'll be back. Okay I'm back and time to drill a hole and I gotta decide where I want to put it. I want to put it that way or I want to put it this way. I kind of like it this way. I can even do it that way. <laughs> so I'm going to drill along the top. Hmm. I like it like that. Bring down my board. Find the middle. I'm going to use my pin drill for this part. Get it started.
thinking about there. In the center, maybe not. Maybe over just a hair. Hmm. I think that's got it. Just drill in the start hole. And now I can see where I want to put my hole. I'm going to put my pin drill up. Grab my little drill master. And it's a bigger bit than the one I was using on there. I'm going to put it on there, put some pressure on, and then turn it on so that I don't scratch up my resin. Again, because it didn't go all the way through. There we go. That's got her. Whoops. It won't turn that back on. Get rid of the block. this off. Okay, I've already got my cord cut. I've picked out my uh, bail to go on there. Find my tools. And I'm way out of frame. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and connect this first. So, grab it, pull one way and the other way. Find my hole. Hopefully it's big enough. Oh, I might have to drill that a little bit bigger. It's not wanting to go through. Try that. Let's see how that goes. Move that. <clears throat> Blow all my stuff away. Try that again. There we go. It's going slowly, but it's going. Glad I had some of the big ones. Whoops. I guess I need that. Put that on there. Sorry. Put that on there. Twist these back together. Make sure they're good and closed. I like to hide where it's at. Not one to spin through there though. Hmm. There it goes. Pop it over that lip there. It's good and tight. And it's not going anywhere. 
Okay, now for the cordings. I have some cordings here. And you can't see anything I'm doing. There we go. I got my glue. Find my toothpick. I know it's here somewhere. There it is. bit of glue on there. Glue the end. Trade places with my fingers here. I like to try to twist it in there. Sometimes it will fight me, sometimes it won't. It seemed to go good that time. I push it up to the uh, top there where you can just see it and pull it back down a bit. Do the other one the same way. Brush the glue on there with your toothpick. Need a little more. Okay. Switch out the hands here. Try to twist that in there. It's going to give me some trouble. There it goes. Get it up to the top where you can just see it. And then pull it back down. There you go. That's all there is to that. Put the glue back up so it don't dry out. Because if I don't do it right away, I will forget. And I will end up with glue drying out. I've done it before. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> okay. And we'll finish it off. One one way, one the other. And then again, back together. You either hear a click or you'll fill it. You'll know it's together. Same with the little one. One one way, one the other. Put my clasp on there. Put that on there. And back together. I just like to grab it and squeeze it, make sure it's together. There we have our connection. Well, maybe if I can get it in the shot. There we go. Let me turn it this way. And it's all done and that was it for this tutorial I do believe I think that was all everything I wanted to show you so if this video was helpful to you in any way please like share comment and subscribe and I have a Facebook group now uh, Trisha's lovely creations and uh, I hope to see you there have a great day thanks for stopping by